This just happened, and my wife is currently sleeping while my mom is blowing up my phone. I, 33 male, am married to my wonderful wife Melody, 29, and she's currently pregnant with our first child together. In addition, I have a young daughter, Tina, whose mother I split 50-50 custody with, so I know for the most part what Melody needs to feel supported while she carries our child. I have been spending lots of time making sure she's comfortable and taking on more of the load at home, so she's not doing too much. This is her first child, after all, and it's a lot for her physically and emotionally. My mother and Melody don't get along too well. Mom didn't like my ex, either. We broke up because we were headed on different paths, not because of my mother, and there's no bad blood. So I think she doesn't like her because she's dating me for whatever reason. It's weird. She's very nitpicky about Melody. What she does around the house, how emotional she is, Melody already cries very easily and being pregnant has made her even more sensitive, which is fine, and the fact she wants to be a stay-at-home mom. It just seems like nothing Melody does is okay. I do, however, stand up for her and do not just allow my mom to talk down to her. Today, before picking up my daughter from summer camp, Melody went to three different grocery stores to find rotisserie chicken. She's been talking about it since last night and really wanted one, lol. She sent me picture messages documenting her quest for the chicken and finally found it. My girl was happy. Rotisserie chicken is also a comfort food for her, like spaghetti, because her mom used to get one of those when she was having a lazy day and didn't feel like cooking. She was planning on serving that with some other basic sides for dinner, which was perfectly fine by me. My mother came by to see Tina and started telling Melody the chicken was bad for her and that she shouldn't be eating that pregnant. Melody said it's fine, she usually eats healthy and just wants this one thing she's craving. My mom went on about how unhealthy it was and said she needed to eat something else. Melody said no and went to the backyard to FaceTime her family, out of state. When she came back, my mom had thrown out the food and ordered takeout, a salad for Melody and pizza for everyone else. Melody asked where the chicken was and my mother told her she needed to start being a responsible mother and eat correctly for the baby. Melody screamed, what the heck is wrong with you? Why are you always such a witch to me? She then started crying and called me home. After hearing her story, I asked my mother to leave and said she was not to come back until she apologized for how she treated Melody. My mom went on about how I'm choosing another woman over her, but I just think enough is enough and Melody reached her limit. She apologized to me for blowing up when Tina was in the house, but I told her it's okay, things happen, Tina is okay, and I went to find her another chicken before the store closed. My dad thinks I'm right for taking Melody's side, but my brother thinks I should always defend mom. So, am I the idiot? Not the idiot, but your mom sure is. As a former pregnant woman, if my mother-in-law would have thrown away food I was craving and ordered me a salad instead, I would have thrown her on a rotisserie and spun her around until she apologized. Glad you went on a hunt for the chicken to replace the one your mother trashed. Great husbanding on your end, OP. Brother must learn that defending mum will not land him in any relationships. Your mum is controlling and is a red flag. Also, what is that comment you are choosing another woman over her? Sounds like you need to remind her she's your mother, not your wife. Mothers of boys can be so possessive of their sons and she's one of them. I'm glad you're not letting her. Always defend your wife. Brother annoys me so much. This isn't about defending people or picking sides. You defend the person that is right, regardless of relationship status. But you are right in that if you want a healthy relationship, boundaries with family are essential. My husband's parents tried to bring up honor your father and mother when they were disrespecting our choices when we were engaged. My husband shot back, a man will leave his parents and cleave to his wife. Nah, if you're going to get biblical, don't forget the Bible. 14 years later, we all have a wonderful relationship with no boundary stomping. I love my mother-in-law to pieces now, but it took years. I'm a 25-year-old female and my husband is 27. My niece is a toddler. My sister asked me if we would take her daughter since she had to go out of town for a surgical procedure and wouldn't be able to care for her daughter until she recovers. I ran this by my husband, who immediately said no and shook his head. I said it was my niece and that just because we weren't fans of having kids ourselves doesn't mean we can't do a favor for my family. It ended in an argument, but I ended up taking her anyway. He refuses to do anything with her. This isn't the first time they've met. He's just never really interacted with her, which I don't expect him to. But when I brought up that he could have a better attitude about this, he just said that I shouldn't have brought a kid into our home. 
He also said that because of this, I'm probably going to change my mind about having kids and he won't put up with that. He said that he would divorce me if I even suggested it. My niece hasn't even been much of a problem. In fact, she's usually quiet unless she's hungry or tired. Yes, she gets into stuff and makes messes, but I assume that's standard toddler behavior. I don't understand why he's so angry since it's not like he has to do anything. Edit. I should add, she'll only be here for about a week and a half, maybe longer if my sister has complications, but we don't know yet. Also, I told him he should have a better attitude towards her because I read that kids can tell when you don't like them, and being away from her mom is already hard enough for her. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. I don't care who it is. You don't arbitrarily get to bring someone to stay at your home when your partner says no. So why should he have a good attitude when he said no to someone staying in his home, and you decided you didn't care and were going to do it anyway? Why even go through the charade of asking when he didn't care about his answer? Agree. You are the idiot for asking your husband and then doing it anyway. I am a mother and I'm always volunteering to watch the kids of my family and friends, but I would never bring a toddler into a house with an adult that is not comfortable with kids for 10 plus days. That is a tough age. Um, not the idiot. I'm surprised some people are voting you the idiot here. OP did a favor for her sister who is having a complicated surgery. I'm sure the sister tried finding other means of childcare. This is what family does for one another. It doesn't mean she's entitled to do it, but OP has empathy to do so, which OP's husband seriously lacks. And then the comments about divorcing at the mention of wanting kids. Frankly, his idea that you'd be that likely to change your mind just from doing a favor for your sister is insulting to you. That's a big leap. Shows where his head is at. Spoiler. Not focused on sister surgery and well-being of niece, and just being a petty idiot thing to say in general. Exactly. All of this. I am child-free myself, but when my best friend donated a kidney to his wife, I was ready to be with their kid for two months if need be while they recover. It's his family too, and he should never have said no. He should care enough to sacrifice his freedom for a couple of weeks. I assume the sister wouldn't have asked if she had better options. My 25-year-old son is 217 pounds and 5 foot 10, which makes me scared for his future. I know his size wouldn't be notable to most Americans, but we are not American. We are a health-conscious family, and I know full well his size is dangerous. He used to be fit, but gained all the weight from drinking and eating junk food. His healthy weight is 150 to 170, so it's a drastic gain. He's the only large one out of all four children, I'm not sure why, we only fed them healthy food. He's also the only one who has struggled with addiction, so perhaps they're linked. When he was around 11 or 12, he became chubby, and we put him on a diet and exercise regime, a fun one, and checked his weight weekly. He lost weight and was healthy until he was 22 when he started drinking too much. As far as I'm aware, he has controlled the alcohol issue, but he is still obese. He has lost a little weight over the last few months, but not enough. Obviously, now that he's 25, I can't enforce weekly weigh-ins and a special diet. He moved home due to breaking up with his girlfriend, and he's so insecure about his weight he doesn't even like going outside. He used to be very handsome, and I think the difference in how people treat him is upsetting, so he has kind of a short fuse. I don't know how to help without being overbearing, but I offered to cook him separate meals to fit into a diet plan I made for him, 1200 calories, and he agreed. I think he finds it a bit humiliating because I used to make him separate meals when he was a chubby kid. A couple of nights ago, he came back from work and I made a curry for the family but made a separate meal for him, boiled chicken and asparagus. He was kind of upset because it wasn't enough food and he was hungry from being on his feet all day, but he wanted me to help him. It's a lot of effort to make separate low-calorie meals and I don't think he appreciates my effort. The curry was too high in fat and carbs to fit into his diet. We ended up arguing. He thinks I treat him like he's about to die of obesity. I said that if he wants to eat unhealthy food, he's more than welcome to buy his own. But if he wants free food, he shouldn't be surprised when I cook him something healthy to help him lose weight. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. 1,200 calories a day is unsustainable. Please, if you want to help him, send him to a nutritionist to sort him out properly. You are a parent trying to help and I get it. You're caring for your child. But go about it in a better way. When he was around 11 or 12, he became chubby and we put him on a diet and exercise regime, a fun one, and checked his weight every week. Hmm, I wonder why he now has disordered eating habits. Do you hate him or something? What a crappy meal to give someone. 
Curries can easily fit into diet plans, especially sane diet plans that don't involve an adult man trying to live on 1,200 calories a day. It sounds like you gave the poor guy an eating disorder and addiction problem with the separate meals and weigh-ins when he was a kid. He was a bit chubby, which he probably would have grown out of, and you hyper-focused on it. That's a terrible way to treat a young person. Leave this poor guy alone. If he wants help, he should see a professional who knows what they're doing. You do not, and are making it worse. For context, my female 25, husband's 27, remaining parent passed away about four months ago. He has a nearly adult brother, Ryan, living with their aunt. He's autistic and I find it hard to interact with him, and being around him generally gives me anxiety. Anyways, my husband and I plan to go on vacation, and he told me that he would like to take Ryan with us to cheer him up after all he's been through. I declined, but he went on about how this isn't a couple's getaway, and that he was okay with me bringing my friend with us, and asked why he couldn't bring Ryan. I told him that first, I had already stated how I couldn't handle Ryan's autism, and also I've never been on vacation with him, and I don't know how he would behave. My husband got offended and called me cruel to think it's okay to exclude his brother, who is now also an orphan, basically just because of slight inconveniences. I told him to drop it, but he lectured me about how he was the one paying for it, which irked me because I'd paid for so many things in the past. His aunt called me to give me stern talk about this, saying that Ryan did nothing to me and that it was cruel of me to try to exclude him and ignore my husband's wishes. We're still arguing about it, and my friend thinks my husband is trying to control me by using the fact that he's paying to spring whoever he wants on me on vacation. The kid lost his parent. Your friend is coming. Husband is paying? Yeah, you are the idiot. If I were your husband, I'd leave you at home and take the brother. But instead, you're what he needs a vacation from. The ableism is strong here and your friend is enabling your BS. You should sit with why your husband's little brother makes you uncomfortable and what that says about you. Have you read anything about autism or put any effort into trying to get to know him? This is the family you married into and it's heartbreaking how cold you're being because he's autistic. Work through this discomfort for your family's sake and grow as a person. Also, her husband just lost his second parent four months ago. He's trying to spend time with his only remaining immediate family member from his childhood. Where is OP's empathy for her husband? It's not that the brother-in-law deserves a vacation or whatever. It's that OP's husband asked that his wife do a nice thing in his grief and try to alleviate the grief of his little brother in a small way. OP is the idiot to her brother-in-law and her ableism is astounding. Yeah, OP and her friends are absolute idiots. OP, if you genuinely love and care about your husband, the only way for you to understand his brother's autism is to spend time with the kid. Get to know him and learn how he behaves and his preferences so that you're no longer afraid of him and his behavior. Then perhaps you'll even get to love the kid. I'm married to Ashley. Our girls from previous relationships are both nearly adults. My ex-wife was Sam. She and I were never a great couple, but we were great friends and great parents, co-parents, so we stayed very close after the divorce. I was aware she'd started saving for our daughter's future education. We'd reached somewhat of a compromise on how to handle that. I did most of the spending on her adolescent activities and extras, so all her extracurricular activities, hobbies, and for the most part gifts that we shared, while she effectively saved for the future. I never knew how much was in the account until my ex died two years ago. It was then I learned she'd saved a hefty amount and that aside from her funeral expenses, she'd left money for our daughter to use as she saw fit outside of the college money. Ashley and I married seven years ago, and at the time we'd discussed money for the girls, etc. I explained that I wasn't saving, but my ex-wife was. She'd not started anything for her daughter at that point, and her ex wasn't saving either. So we started to put a little by when we could, but we were never able to save huge chunks at a time. After Sam died, money became a much larger issue. Ashley was upset to learn my daughter had more than my stepdaughter for college and that she had money to spare. It only became a bigger issue this past May. My daughter told me that she'd decided to attend community college in her mom's hometown so she could be close to her grandparents for a while and still follow her dreams. Ashley then discussed how some of the money could go to my stepdaughter. I told her no, that it was not our money, and even if she tried to suggest that it would be mine, seeing as my daughter is a minor, I pointed out that it would be stealing to take it from her, and I had never contributed to that fund directly, and it would be taking my ex-wife's money. 
Ashley went off about Sam putting so much away when she knew our daughter had a stepsister and how she was selfish to make her so much better off than her only sibling. I told her she needed to get over that because Sam only had one child to think about and it wasn't her job to think about my stepdaughter or any bio kids that I could have after our divorce. Ashley told me to think about my stepdaughter. I told her my stepdaughter is not entitled to my daughter's or my ex-wife's money, whichever way she wants to look at it. She asked how I could be so callous about her daughter's disadvantage. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Sam saved for her daughter, her only daughter, not for a stranger's kid who she had no responsibility for. Don't punish your daughter by taking away the college fund that her mother set up for her just because your wife doesn't know how to make good financial decisions for her kid. Maybe your wife should canvass the neighborhood and find out if anyone there has saved money for their kids to attend college, so she can demand a share of that, too. Your daughter lost her mother. That is her inheritance and college fund. So ask your wife if your stepdaughter had a sizable inheritance, would she be expected to share it with her stepsister? That's your answer. Double standards. Wow. Just wow. Your wife is jealous that your ex-wife managed to ensure your daughter's future. She's bitter and jealous that now she appears to be a useless mother who can't even save money to ensure her own daughter's future. Her gaining access to that money is just plain theft and thievery. You may want to rethink your relationship with your current wife.